In this group of videos, we're going to go through the different parts of the job generator section of the Slingshot website. Uh, just know that with website development, the buttons, locations, names, anything like that, they could possibly change in the future. So right now we're just covering it as it is today. To get to the job generator section of the website, you're going to first go to the manage dropdown and then go to job generator. It's going to bring us straight to this jobs list page. And that's actually what we're going to be covering in this video. So just at a quick glance, we have our filter options on the left. We have our job list on the right. As far as the job list goes, you can see that we have all of our different jobs. But uh, one thing I want to point out is that this list is only going to show jobs for Job Generator and Job Sync. So the Slingshot Silver subscription and the Slingshot Gold subscription. Invisio Pro, Viper Pro... Uh, any of the legacy field computer information, that is not going to show up here. So this is going to be, at this point right now, Viper 4 and CRX only. Now with that said, uh, we got a couple icons here that I want to point out on each of these jobs. This first one here, this piece of paper with a paper clip and a checklist, that is for the job generator files. And the cloud icon is for cloud jobs or job sync. Now to start with the, the filter options that you have, uh, the first one that I want to point out, which is very important, is the current company up here in the upper right. So for most people, this is going to be a non-issue because you're just going to be in charge of one company. But some will be in charge of a few different companies, or if you break up your company into sub-companies, you're going to want to be able to use this. So this is going to be the main filter for everything that appears in this job list. Uh, so you'll see we actually have a few up here. Uh, right now it's on Raven Industries. I'm just going to change over to one of our other test companies. And you can see that it's going to completely change everything that shows in the job list. So just be aware of that. If you come back here, you know, the next day, the next week, just make sure that if you want to look for jobs under that specific company to always go up to the upper right first. Now for the different filter options, you can see I only have four jobs in my job list. That's primarily going to be because by default, this date range down here is set to the last two weeks. So one thing that's easy to do is you can actually just go to the first column and then just change it to the year previous. So if you want to look at jobs from the past year, you can see now I got a longer job list with more jobs there. The other couple quick filter options that I want to show are the availability and the participant activity. So the availability, we have the ability to show all jobs, and right now it's set to not archived. And then there's also the ability to see archived jobs. And you can see the difference between the archived and not archived, just the color difference there. And also archived jobs are going to have an archive icon here. I'm going to set that to all right now. And then as far as participant activity, it'll show all for anything. So any participant activity, whether someone's been in that job or no one's been in that job. The None option shows any jobs that have never had a participant in them. We also have in-progress jobs. So you can see up here we have a job that has sort of like a blue background to it and also has an in-progress icon. And then we have inactive jobs. Again, I'm just going to set that one to all to show everything. Going back up to the top here, we have a Sort By option. So we have Job Status you can see it's probably sorting by the in-progress jobs and then moving on down the line. We can also sort by the job name, the creation date, and the grower farm field. And we have this little icon over here that you can, you can press that to sort by ascending or descending order. We have the different grower farm field options. So if you want to sort by an entire grower or if you want to narrow it down to farms and fields, you have the ability to do so. And then we can also sort by jobs that are no grower, no farm, no field. So for reference on the Viper 4 and the CR7 and the CR12, any jobs that were started on that field computer that weren't assigned a grower, farm, or field, they're going to just automatically default to no grower, no farm, no field. So when none of these options are changed, it's just going to show everything by default. And then if we check this box, it's going to show no grower, no farm, no field jobs. So down here you can see this one actually has a grower farm and field assigned to it. You can sort by particular systems. 
So for example, if you want to see all of the jobs for a specific machine, you have the ability to do that. And then if you want to sort jobs that were using a very specific product, that option's available as well. And then down here at the bottom, if you want to just completely reset the filters, you can see it's going to reset it. And I changed the availability, the participant activity, as well as the date range. Now back into the job list, each of these jobs is essentially a button. And within those jobs, we can see the different products that were applied, as well as the participants that were active in that job, uh, and whether they're still in the job or if they've left. Now there's a few buttons down at the bottom of each of these jobs. So we have the job live view. We have the ability to send jobs to more machines or to more systems. We have the details view. So this is going to show the details for that job as it was created. And then the ability to archive that job. I'm just going to jump into the job live view here real quick. And so here we can see that we have two different participants in this job. And this was probably done with simulated GPS on uh, some desks. But with this, we can see each participant is given their own color. And we can see their sections as they were applying. Now, this isn't going to break it down into individual sections. It's just going to be the entire application width. So if there's at least one section on at one specific time, it's going to show the entire width. The last thing I want to cover is the summary view. And so what this one's going to show is the acres applied by particular growers and by systems. And so this is only going to show jobs that were created using Job Generator or if they were created using Job Sync, and they're showing on our jobs list. So if you've ever deleted a job out of uh, your Slingshot account, those are not going to show up in this acre count. So at a glance, we can see the total acres for each of these growers and each of these systems. And then that's further broken down by RX map jobs and non-RX map jobs or straight rate jobs. Now, if we want to look at the breakdown for, let's say, a specific grower and see where jobs are attributing to that acre count, we can come back over into the list view and then we can sort by that specific grower. So I'm just going to pick Aaron here. And then we can see these are the two jobs that are contributing to that 31 acre count. And then to close it out, if you're looking at the uh, summary view again, you also have the ability to download a CSV file uh, for you know use with, say, an Excel spreadsheet or any other similar program. And uh, again, just remember that with this summary view, and as you're going to download this CSV, that's going to go off of all of the filters that you have set on the left side. So if I were to download this CSV right now, it would only be for the last two weeks. So you can see that changes as I go uh, back the entire year. And that's it for the jobs list.